Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 FPS series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can set up a simple match timer for your FPS game. Now one thing I do want to mention before I go any further is that this tutorial is entirely optional. If you're working on like a single player story mode type game then you might not want to have this timer implemented. However if you are going to be doing something with objectives where you know you want them to have a time restriction then go ahead and add this. Now this timer is just going to be a little message in the top left hand corner showing you exactly how many minutes and seconds you've got left and then once this counts down from the maximum time whatever that may be whether that be 15 minutes 20 minutes or whatever it's going to pause the game when it gets down to zero minutes and zero seconds. It's a really easy and simple system to set up, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, one thing I do want to note is most of this is going to be heads up display stuff. Now, we've got a little image in the background here that we've got to put here, and then we've also got some pieces of text for the time as well. So let's start off with those graphical elements, and once we've done that, we can move on to setting up the timer using blueprints. So open up your engine and then from there open up your FBS HUD as once again this stores all of the graphical information of your heads up display and then if you go to the top left hand corner where the heads up display should be you can see we've got this little gap now there's a little black box that should be going in here so grab yourself an image just drag and drop and make sure you anchor it to the top left as well and then for this image we need to make this black now within our HUD assets, if you go into your blueprints and HUD assets, we have got an image called timer underscore backing and that is essentially just black. So just click this, just use selected asset and chuck it in there. And then for size 47 by 19, so 47 by 19 and that's automatically just going to make it fit itself in there for you. What I would do however is just try and line up your mini map with it just to make it look nice and me I am pretty happy with this. Now what we need on top of this is a couple pieces of text. Now we are going to be using dynamic text to control the timer. So I'm going to have one piece of text for the minutes, one piece of text for the semicolon and then another piece of text for the seconds as well. So I need three pieces of text. So I'm going to go in here making sure I turn my font size all the way down to something like uh, maybe four and then I'm just going to make this smaller and I'm just going to add in the rest of the text that I'm going to need. One, two, set this to four and then one more piece of text, font size four again and we can start putting it in here. Now what I'm going to do is set the default content for the first piece of text to zero, zero and then I'm going to place it in and then I'm going to do the same thing for this one, but this time it's not going to be zero, 00, it's going to be a semicolon. This one's not going to be changing. And then the last piece of text is also going to be 00. zero. I'm just going to scale the box down, make sure it fits, and then essentially just place it on top just like this. And now what I need to focus on is pretty much just getting this to be the right size and look good within the box, which is quite easy. One thing I am going to do is change the font style to light to make it look a little bit easier on the eyes. Do the same thing for all three of those pieces of text of yours. And then once you've done this, you can start increasing the font size. I usually like to change the font style, um, you know, between light, bold, regular and stuff before I start increasing the font size. Otherwise, I can just overestimate it, you know, because it could get bigger or smaller depending on which way you go with the font family. So I want to maybe change my font size up to something like six. And then if I scale this out, I still think that's a bit too small. So maybe seven, maybe eight. And now I think this is about the right size for me. Yep. So with this, I know I need my text to be size eight now. I'm just going to do the same thing on all of these. So change this to eight and eight and we're all good. So now if we just place this on the left hand side of my little timer and then with my sem semicolons just make my box a little bit bigger so that it shows all the text and for the seconds I also need to make this a little bit bigger so it shows all the text but other than that if I just place these in here to me 
that looks pretty good. So what I need to do now then is pretty much create some kind of blueprint that's going to generate the minutes and the seconds for this game and we're going to want it to go down from you know the default value. So the way that we're going to do this once I've compiled this is go over to our game mode so blueprints and then game mode and then within here if you open up your full blueprint editor we're going to create a couple of variables and these variables are what your heads up display is going to link to. First variable if you press the little plus icon to create it is going to be called minutes and then the second one is going to be called seconds. Now for the variable type you're going to want to set both of these to integers. So that way we can work with a numerical value and we are all good. So what we need to do now then, we've got these variables, is simply start creating our timer system, make it tick down every second and then just reduce the number and if it gets below zero, take a minute off and all of that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. So right click and type in tick and then from this just drag out a delay and what this is going to do if we set the delay duration to 1 is it's going to fire off whatever we do once a second and it's essentially going to be like ticking on a clock and it's just going to work really nice for us. So what we want to do then is grab our seconds and then set our seconds to integer minus integer and we're going to get the original value for seconds and then take away one from it. And now this is essentially going to tick down from whatever value it is. Now what I'm going to do is set my default value for minutes to 14, default value for seconds to 59. So that way, you know, we give it a number to count down from. This is essentially 15 minutes. Or if you wanted to, you could just set your seconds to zero and then your minutes to 15. It's entirely up to you. This is your way of defining the default match time, what it's going to be counting down from. So with this now, with the seconds at minus one, what we're going to do is run a quick check. And the check that we want to do is check to see whether or not the seconds have gone below zero. And if they have gone below zero, then we need to tell it to set the seconds you know, back up to 60 or back up to 59 or whatever you want to do so that it goes into the next minute. So condition is going to be seconds, so get seconds and just do integer. And then what we're looking for is less than, in, uh, integer less than zero. So now if seconds is less than zero, what we want to do, tell it to do is set seconds to 69 or even 59 sorry and that's going to be all good and then with this we're also going to right click and tell it to set minutes to minus one so integer minus integer so we're going to take away the original minutes value you know by minus one so what this is essentially doing is when it counts down and when it gets down to zero it is going to set the minutes back up to 59, uh, sorry, set the seconds up to 59 and set the minutes to minus one. So what we're gonna do quickly is compile this and hook up these variables to our heads up display so we can see that this is working and doing exactly what I want it to do. So I'm gonna open up my FBS HUD, I'm gonna go over to my timer in the top left corner here, and I'm gonna create a couple of content bindings. Now these bindings are going to tie to the two pieces of text for the minutes and the seconds. So grab your minutes to start with and then go to content binding and just create a binding. Drag this out and just type in cast to game mode and cast to your third person game mode and as third person game mode get your minutes just like that. And then hook this up to the return value. For the two text, make sure your minager, uh, minimum integral digits is set to two, so it always displays at least two digits. For the object wildcard, just type in get game mode so it can actually access the information it needs to. Go to your design view and then just do the same thing for seconds. Click it, create a binding, drag out, and then cast to third person game mode, which is where we created those variables and then as third person game mode, get seconds. And just hook this up, 
to your return value. Drag it down, minimum integral digits to two, and object wildcard is simply get game mode. So now if we compile this, close it up, press play, in the top left hand corner, you should be able to see our timer ticking down, 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 and down. Only trouble is, it's a little bit small because we are in this really tiny version of our game. So what you could do if you wanted to, was you could open this up in a standalone game. And by doing so, it's just going to allow you to play your game in full screen so that you can see your timer exactly how it, you know, should be displayed on a 1920 by 1080 document. Now, inside of Photoshop, I can see this timer quite clearly. However, everyone else, if you're playing in Unreal Engine, it's just going to be a little bit too small. Um, but it's not really something to worry about. So what I'm going to do is quickly pause the video, let the standalone version open up, and then from there, we can check to see whether or not it's working. So, two seconds. Okay, so the standalone version of my game has now opened up, and in the top left hand corner, you can see our timer is a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to maximize this window, just to make it the full size that I want it to be. Um, or what you could also do is set res 1920 by 1080, press the tilde key to open up this little window, tilde key being the one in the top left hand corner just below escape, and just type in set res 1920 by 1080, and then if you press F, it's going to jump it into full screen mode, and that way you know 100% you are going to be able to see the game as large as it can. And notice now in the top left hand corner of my, you know, game, you can see that my timer is going down and down and down, and it's already going down to 13 minutes and 24 seconds, down from 15, so I've been in a standalone game for about a minute now. I did cut off a little bit. For the most part though, what we just want to see is that little transition from 13 minutes to 12 minutes, just making sure that it works exactly as it should. So give it a couple of seconds, six seconds to be exact, and once we know it works, we're going to add the last element to our timer. And there you go, it's jumped to 12.59, and it's just going to keep going through this. Anyway, so the timer's working, we just need to add one more element, which is when it gets down to zero, we are going to tell it to end the match. And then from the end match screen, uh, sorry, from the end of the match, we are going to tell it to open up a little widget later on, which is going to show how many enemies you've killed and, you know, that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is get out of this little window real quick, and I'm just going to press Alt F4 to close that. Don't worry, it's not going to close the engine, it's just going to take you straight back in there. So now, if we open up our third person game mode again, from here, what we're going to do is run a little check, a branch to check to see whether or not the minutes, get the minutes, has gone below, uh, you know, gone to equal to minus one, because if it does go to minus one, that means your, you know, your time is over. So integer, and what we're looking for is less than or equal to, and then minus one, and if it is less than this, we are simply going to tell it to pause the game just like that. And that's going to pause it. And from there, once we've got a game over screen or a match over screen, you can just tell it to create a widget and display all the graphical information that you need. Anyway, for the most part, we have got our timer into our game. It looks really great and our heads up display is almost finished. In terms of our heads up display, there's not much more we need to add. We still need to do weapon switching with the icons that you can see down here. And we also need to add functionality for the grenades and the grenade counter as well. Anyway guys, once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.